Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Pharmacy Made Easy. In today's video, let's see in detail about the topic Posology. And do you know what is meant by Posology? So first, let's divide this topic into two words that is Posos and Logos. So this term posology that is derived from a Greek word that means here posos that means how much and logos that means the science. Okay, so this word posology that derived from a Greek word that derived from two Greek words first one posos that means how much and second one logos that means science okay so from this you can understand how much so this term we will usually express in relation with calculations so like that this posology that is the branch of medicine dealing with the dose Okay, so the optimum dose of a drug that varies from patient to patient. So, there are different factors available which affect the influence of the dose of a drug. So, calculation of doses that is one of the important topic when we are studying or when we are dealing with the syllabus of pharmacy. So, this is very useful in case of both pharmacy pharmaceutics and also clinical pharmacology or pharmacy practice okay so i hope this definition was clear it's the branch of medicine that deals with the dose now let's see some factors which affecting the dose of a drug and i already said this dose calculation that is important because we have to optimize the dose in order to get desired pharmacological action so there are various factors which affect the dose first one age so the first factor affecting this dose that is age so there are different categories we can divide or human beings can be categorized into different age groups like neonates for example, from birth up to 30 days, we can categorize it as neonates. Then there is infants. So that's in another category that is up to one year age, we can call them as infants. And up from one to four years, we can categorize the people as child. And then the next category will be adults. And the last one that will be geriatric or elderly patients. And we know in case of children and mainly in case of neonates and in case of children or infant, their organ system or the enzyme system that mainly involved in metabolism or excretion etc. that will be less developed. So all those dose should be less than that of adult. And also in case of elderly persons, the renal functions decline, decline with age. Okay, so there may be chances for renal failure or hepatic failure in some cases that can be progressed with age. So, in all that case, we have to reduce the dose or fix the dose appropriately. Because the drug absorption or distribution or metabolism or elimination, you know, that are the important factors which affect a drug action. So that may be varied in case of elderly patients or in case of infants or child, etc. So in such patients, the dose will be required will be less as compared to that of adults. So in their case, we have to adjust the dose appropriately now the second category that is sex so 
special care should be taken while administering any drug to a woman during menstruation, pregnancy and lactation. Strong purgative, for example, strong purgative should not be given in menstruation and pregnancy. Like that there are certain drugs which we will avoid in case of pregnancy or lactation because that may cause the fetus or the child, that lactating child adversely. So in that case we will avoid that one, avoid some medicines. Like that another example antihistamines and sedative drugs these are not taking during breastfeeding because these drugs get secreted in the milk and the child may consume them so that will affect the child adversely so in that case we have to avoid some drugs so that also depends on the sex mainly in case of women then the third one body size so the third factor body size it mainly influences the concentration of drug in the body and we know an average adult dose is calculated for a person with 70 kilo body weight so the usual that standard value the average body weight standard value we will be taking it as 70 kilogram so in case of obese patients or in case of extremely lean patients so there will be variation in this weight and that can affect the drug concentration mainly the distribution of drug okay so in that case we have to calculate the drug based on their body weight so that is the third factor that is body size then fourth one root of administration root of administration we know intravenous injection i already said that you have 100 percentage bioavailability so their dose will be less than that of oral roots okay so in case of intravenous injection the total drugs reaches immediately to the systemic circulation hence the dose is less in intravenous or IV injection than through oral route or any other routes so in that case also dose should be adjusted appropriately next the fifth one time of administration time of administration the drugs they are most quickly absorbed from empty stomach the presence of food in the stomach delays the absorption of drug so hence a potent drug is given before meals and irritant drug is given after meals so that the drug is diluted with the food and thus produce less irritation now let's see the sixth factor that is environmental factors environmental factors that are the sixth factor stimulant types of drug these are taken at day time and sedative type of drugs these are taken at night we know that because the sedative types of drugs that will induce sleep so that will cause some case uh, like sedation like feeling so in that case we are administrating such drugs at night so the dose of a sedative required in daytime will be much higher than at night and alcohol another example alcohol that is better tolerated in winter than summer so there are different environmental factors which affect the dose of a drug next the seventh one psychological states psychological state of mind can affect the response of a drug for example nervous or anxious patients in their case they require more general anesthetics and another example place war 
so this placebo that's an inert substance that does not contain any drug so in some patients they often get some psychological effects from this placebo so this when this placebo they are mainly lactose tablets or distilled water injections example etc so when administering such drugs or such placebos the person who have a psychological like they will think when this drug administered into a body that will help to relieve the symptoms so if they have such a psychological state so that can automatically reduce the symptoms without any drug or without any active ingredient so that's all depend upon the psychological mind of that patient okay so this placebos that are most often used in clinical trials of drugs some case like control etc next the eighth one pathological state or the presence of disease so several drugs for example gastrointestinal drug uh, diseases like achlorhydria that is reduced secretion of hcl or acid in the stomach so in that case that will reduce the absorption of drugs like aspirin and in case of liver disease or kidney disease i already said in that case dosage adjustment that is a must because in liver and kidney that are the important organs which are responsible for drug metabolism as well as excretion so when there is a failure for these organs the dosage adjustment is a must required step in order to reduce the toxicity then the ninth one accumulation accumulation that is another factor which affect the dose of a drug so any drug will accumulate in the body if the rate of absorption that is more than rate of elimination so slowly eliminated drug are most often accumulated in the body and often cause toxicity example prolonged use of chloroquine that cause damage to the retina so drug accumulation that is another factor which affect the dose of a drug next factor drug interactions drug interactions so simultaneous administration of two drugs may result in same or increased or decreased effects so in my previous video i said when nsaids that given along with loop diuretics that will reduce the effect of this loop diuretics by suppressing the prostaglandin synthesis that is an example for drug interaction so here the concomitant administration of one drug will interfere or reduce the action of other drugs that is one case and in some case the simultaneous administration that will increase the effect of the drug that is synergism for example we are given this you know sulfur methoxazole and dimethoprim that is cotrimoxazole in a combination that is for enhancing their antibacterial effect that's an example for synergism okay so like that this drug interaction that can affect the dose of a drug next 11th idiosyncrasy idiosyncrasy this is an exceptional response to a drug in a few individual for example in some patient aspirin may cause asthma then penicillin cause irritating rashes on skin so idiosyncrasy we are not expecting some results or side effects or unwanted effects will arise so we don't know the reason so that is what idiosyncrasy so that is the another factor which affect the dose of a drug next 12th factor that is genetic disorders 
so genetic disorders or diseases will also affect the doses of f drugs for example in some patients with this genetic defects they lack some enzymes so in those case some drugs are contraindicated for example patients lacking g6 pd enzyme that is glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme they should not be given primaquine that's an anti malarial drug because that will cause hemolysis so that's why this genetic disorders or diseases that will affect the dose of a drug next the another factor or last factor that is tolerance tolerance is an important factor which affect the dose of a drug so in case of tolerance sometimes higher dose of a drug is required to produce a given response okay so we started with normal dose but after its continued use that will leads to that the same dose or the normal dose we our body or our or that drug cannot elicit the pharmacological action so in that case we have to increase the dose in order to get the same effect so here a tolerance is developed okay so in that case in order to get the drug action we have to increase the dose that is what tolerance so in tolerance there is another term that is resistance so resistance means that is an inhibitory action to that action of drug then another important term is tachyphylaxis 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 that means rapid development of tolerance that is what tachyphylaxis okay so when dose of a drug is repeated in quick succession and reduction in response occurs that is what tachyphylaxis for example mainly in case of nicotine ephedrine etc okay so these are the main factors that affect the dose of a drug once again the first one age second one sex third one body size fourth one route of administration fifth one type of administration sixth one environmental factors seventh one psychological state eighth one pathological state ninth one accumulation tenth one drug interactions eleventh one idiosyncrasy twelfth one genetic diseases thirteenth one tolerance so as i said before there are different factors which affect the dose of a drug so accordingly we have to adjust the dose because that is very important otherwise an incorrect dose that will cause toxic reactions okay so we pharmacists we have to provide the right drug at the right time in the right dose through the right route of administration for that right patient okay so that is one of the important responsibility of us okay so these are the main factors that affecting the drug dose so this is all about today's video and in the first part of posology you have seen about the term posology and its definition and various factors affecting the drug dose and in the upcoming part that is posology part 2 we can see in detail about the child dose calculation and thank you for watching my channel and if you like this channel don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you